Hi there YouTube. Um, this is going to be a tutorial on creating a 2D RPG similar to um, Final Fantasy 1. Uh, I enjoyed that game. It was actually the game that got me into role playing games in the beginning back when Nintendo Entertainment System was popular. So hopefully uh, this will be an informative little tutorial and it'll be interesting to those who enjoy RPGs and have a little bit of background in coding. Um, the first thing I wanted to start with in this project of mine is, uh, well, really, let's get into the graphics. I mean, that's the 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 real the real basis of the game, anyway. And um, yeah, to start off, I'd say let's uh, go ahead and load up GIMP here, which is a free um, image editing tool, similar to Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, but it's free. Uh, you can find this on the internet. What I did was um, <clears throat> I created a new um, a, a, a new file here and I made it 1040 by 1040 in GIMP. And what I wanted to do now is uh, we'll go ahead and go to view and we're going to show the grid. And this grid is obviously too small for what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do here is create a source image which is basically going to be the textures for our world so what we'll do here is we'll go to image and we will configure the grid and I want my tiles to be 54 pixels by 54 pixels and that is a fairly good um, estimate actually on the actual um, tile sizes in Final Fantasy 1 I, I did a little experimentation and uh, messed with the offsets a little bit to try to try to get the actual tile size on some screenshots that I took of Final Fantasy 1 and I came up with about 54 pixels by 54 pixels so I figured that would be a good starting point for us uh, in, in this tutorial. So um, if you're not familiar with tiling systems we'll go into much more detail in later tutorials. Right now I just wanted to get the basis for how simple it really is to create these old old school 2D graphics for the RPGs. Um, but basically what we have is each one of these little boxes here will represent a tile which will basically be stamped into our world environment in our video game once uh, once we get the code all nice and completed and, and, and ran up and all that good stuff. But anyway, let's start by creating a land tile. So what we'll do, this is a box selection tool and I want to go back to image and for right, I'm sorry, to view, and we're going to use the snap to grid feature right here. Make sure that's enabled, and that allows us to really just take the grid and it snaps on. You can kind of see it there. I hope uh, the quality of the video is good enough so that you can actually see that it snaps to the grid so you don't have to really worry about getting it exact. So, what we did was we just selected a tile, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fill tool, which is this tool right here. And uh, we'll select the color, and uh, since we're going to do green, let's switch this over to green. And get a neat green here. And this is uh, just looking over here at this box right here and saying, hmm, what does the grass usually look like? And I'd say that's a pretty good color for grass, why not? So we'll come over here and we'll fill it in like that. So now we got this little box guy here and it's filled in, but that's not very interesting anyway. Uh, it's just a big green box, so let's add some uh, some 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 interesting things to it. Let's see here. So I select the pencil tool. Um, I guess that, yeah, that is called a pencil tool. And uh, we're going to go to the settings here. And I don't want the, the you can see that if I click now, it would it would be a very large um, printout for 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 the pencil tool. So I, I'll go over here to the tool dialog and the brushes. And we'll just make this as small as possible so we got a little tiny little pixel there going and that'll be uh, good for our purposes. Now, um, there's no grass in the world that's really all green like this unless you're living on a pristine turf uh, for like a, a football field or something like that. The artificial turf that they have um, on the football field. So let's add a little variation to this tile here so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, so what we'll do is we'll again go back to color and uh, I say let's add uh, some deader looking grass and we'll make that like dark tan color something like that there. And we just go on and we just kind of add some variation to this like this here. And uh, this doesn't, this is an exact science, I mean as you can see we're just really just making little variations f f 
um, throughout the tile and you kind of you don't want to make them all one direction you want to make them kind of random as possible and you know, this way and that way and etc etc you know you get the idea and uh, what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll we'll add some let's add a little bit of yellow to it to the to the color here let's do some let's 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 do it like that you can add some like spots here which will help to clean it up a little bit make it look a little bit more random here and uh, this is going to be obviously this is going to be like the grass texture for uh, grass game and what I've decided to do to keep things simple is I'm going to create a water texture and a grass texture for the game and um, basically make all the continents and um, surrounded by water obviously and what we'll do then is uh, in, in doing that um, we'll have a basis basically for um, creating other interesting effects in, in the land masses themselves such as caves and we could do trees and um, um, cities and all that other stuff but that'll be add-ons but for right now it's a daunting task to think about all these graphics creating them tile by tile but at any rate you get the idea um, so now we have this little tile here and it looks yeah it looks like confetti but um, the GIMP is amazingly powerful in some of its features especially the filters here and what I like to do is I just like to give it a blur sometimes and just experiment so that looks pretty neat to me I, I, I think that's uh, that's a pretty good texture right there it gives it a little bit of a blur I mean we're zoomed way in but I'll show you here in a second I also always go to here um, filters under GIMP and I will go to um, map and this option right here it's called make seamless this basically makes it so that when you um, copy and paste these tiles here, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration. It's much much easier to to visualize this um, um, instead of me just telling you about it. So now we just select our texture there. We'll copy it and then we'll paste it. And you can see this is what the compiler would do when it stamps the images over and over again to create a big. Um, um, continent grass texture and as you can see um, from either end these little white guys here match up so that um, it, it looks natural it looks like this tile here um, could belong next to this tile and, and there's it's seamless and that's why the filter is actually called under the map dialog here it's actually called make seamless so that makes sense it's very intuitive um, so let's zoom out and see what we've got here for our texture for our, our grass texture and uh, that actually looks pretty good in my opinion. We can keep, uh, we can keep, uh, oh, I didn't want to do that, oops. I'm still getting used to GIMP if you guys can't tell that. But um, I wanted to use my select tool, anchor that. Now we can go on and, and keep uh, keep copying and pasting. Oh, snap to grid there. And you can see that it looks, uh, looks not bad I mean for a couple seconds worth of work we have a workable texture here and that'll be our grass texture now we only need one of these textures here for the the main grass and we'll have transitionary textures I'm starting to run out of time um, I think I might be able to pull off making a, a quick water texture for for the ocean let's see if we can do that and then in the next video we'll go ahead and uh, we'll focus on we will focus on um, getting the the transitionary tiles um, up and up and up and kicking so to speak and uh, it'll it'll really start to take shape if you guys have never uh, never had any experience with the source and tiling system for RPG games this will be a great tutorial for you but um, let's see here I'm starting to run out of time um, we'll fill this guy in blue you always have to select the tiles these aren't just individual little palettes here that you can work on you have to select it otherwise you'll fill the entire background with blue that's just something to keep in mind there and uh, well, well we got this nice blue background color here so let's add, zoom in here and we can add some uh, some variation here and I like to do that in white because it kind of represents the the wave waves kind of capping white caps if, if you will and uh, what I do is I just make, uh, just like Final Fantasy did, just do just little circles and just little various variation. I mean, that's all it, it really comes down to is, is making it 
vary enough to, to be believable. And uh, I am actually out of time, you guys, so I'm going to pick this up on the next video. If you like, please go ahead and um, comment. If you like the video, if you like the direction of it, um, it should be really good. Thank you. Um, thanks for viewing. And uh, I'll see you on the, on the next video. Thank you. I can figure out how to close it here.